Viking Hot Takes. Welcome to the NFL Combine with us, guys. Eric, what's your 40 time? Um, A little slower than what they've been, the wide receivers have been running. I, I don't think I could break the fives anymore. Yeah. I, I, I think my, my best was... Uh, Upper fours back in the day, uh, and maybe mid fours back in the day. But yeah, never, nothing ever close to what they're running now, that's for sure. <laughs> wow, that, that might be faster than me. I feel a little bit embarrassed. Either way, <laughs> we've got six more of those questions coming to you live right now. Dave, hit the music. Go a Viking on Viking Hot Takes. Viking Hot Takes. Welcome to the fast-moving Minnesota Vikings talk show. We've got me, Flip Mozzie. We've got Eric J. Thompson. We've got six questions, 20 minutes, and the fans with the answers in the comments. We're back, baby, finally. So buckle up and let's go. Eric, four by one relay champ. How you doing, man? <laughs> Not champ. I just made it to the state finals way back. Again, this is 22 years and probably 40 pounds ago. But yes, uh, I, I used to be fast, I promise. If, if you if you told that to my current soccer teammates, they'd probably, they wouldn't believe you. But yes, w once upon a time, not not combine fast, not NFL fast. That, that just Let's just clarify that. But reasonably fast back then. Yes. I, yeah, I believe it. I mean, I, I haven't, I haven't seen it, but just the way you talk about the speed and the way that you no longer have it makes me think that you, you know, you, you're genuine about being fast at one point but anyways we've got the fans it's good to see y'all too daniel joseph shea c wise hook em, aaron dave we got to get the show started so let's put the time on the clock and we're gonna go with the first question eric how right. many years will kevin o'connell coach the vikings 
I mean, the guy hasn't even been here a month, and you want to predict when he's leaving already? I mean, like, even for you, that's pretty cold flip. But, I mean, it, since you asked, I, I mean, I looked it up, actually, and since 1990, the average NFL head coach lasts about 70 games, which is translates to just barely over four seasons. That isn't very long. And, I mean, okay, you'd have to think if, if – if, if, unless things go Urban Meyer levels of disaster, you'd have to think that O'Connell and Adolfo Mensa get, um, at the very least, three years to, to figure things out and get their foothold and everything. And even Vikings fans who aren't known for their patience, I think they're going to give their new regime at least a few years to find their footing and get going and kind of try to build their plan. But, I mean, after that, this, this is the NFL. It, it stands for not for long in a lot of different places. And if the results are still lackluster, if there doesn't seem to be a direction, you know, it's not like the grace period is going to be longer, you know, in, in three or four years. I mean, like four or five years is kind of an eternity in NFL terms. You, the, the, there's been enough uh, last place to first place stories be, well before the, the Bengals this year to, the, to show that you can turn things around and things can go sideways as well, just as fast in the NFL. But I mean, by the, you know, we're talking four or five years down the road, there might be a new coaching tree started someone that's even younger than Sean McVay and even, you know, has an even more revolutionary offensive mind. You know, they will be the new hot thing and the new coaching tree. And, but I, I think at the very least KOC is going to be here three to four years, same with Kwesi. And, but, Obviously, I'm hoping he hits double digits because that means the hire was a good one and they built something that's long term. I'd love to see KOC. I mean, the age isn't the factor. Obviously, he can be here for a long time. He can be coaching for basically as long as he wants, as long as he gets the results. I'd love to see him last even longer than Zimmer did. But of course, that there are a ton of unknowns. I mean, this is his first head coaching gig. This is Kwesi's first GM gig. So it'll be real interesting to see. But I would be shocked something would have to go really bad if it was less than three four years so it's at least that um but yeah it's still i think it's a little cruel that you're, you're asking him how many how long is 10 years going to be when it hasn't even really started yet how long do you think <laughs> well you know i i think the one thing that you did not mention is the owners the wilts and how they are not likely to rock the boat you know they always talk about how they want right. to model the Pittsburgh Steelers in terms of not just their head coach, but their GM. And yes, Quasi's contract is only four years. Um, we've got fans saying that no matter what they do, if Kirk Cousins is a the quarterback, they ain't going to make it four years. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always got to throw that Kirk Cousins in there, but we're not talking Kirk right now. We're talking Kevin O'Connell. And yeah, you know, I think the owners are going to give him time. We'll be able to, um, I think he's somebody who's going to be able to survive more than one quarterback. I mean, if Mike Zimmer was able to survive two quarterbacks, then certainly Kevin O'Connell, he's a quarterback himself and he should have more skill on that side of the ball, can convince the Wilfs to try it with Kirk Cousins, develop his own quarterback maybe develop two quarterbacks and give it a try. So I see at least Zimmer's terms, I say eight years should be expected for Kevin Connell and hopefully much longer. Right. And and you you make a very good point about the Wilfs being more patient than most NFL owners. And for this franchise, this I, I believe KOC is the 10th coach and this team has been around 60 years, you know, just average that out. And one of those coaches was Norm Van Brocklin, who lasted exactly one year. So the, like the, this <laughs> franchise historically is pretty patient. Of course, you have Bud Grant throwing the average off because he was around forever. But it's, uh, yeah, I, mm -hmm. I hope they give him a, a chance to, act. you know, they're not, the, the Wills don't seem like too much of a knee-jerk reaction. So hopefully they do allow this new regime to give the, uh, to fulfill their vision. All right. My first question for you. Um, it's a ton of new head coach or a ton of new coaches along this coaching staff. It's all filled out now. Which assistant coaches are you most and least excited about? Going into the weeds. I want to caveat by saying, you know, before the Super Bowl, I could not name a single coach on the Bengals coaching staff. So and I reference the Bengals because they made the Super Bowl and because it's a Sean McVay disciple. But honestly, overall, these assistant coaches just don't excite me. They just seem like a bunch of Kevin O'Connell's friends. And, oh, we got somebody from the Vic Fangio system. The coach I'm least excited about is probably Ed Donatel. 
Um, it seems like a very Norv Turner ish hire to me where you're like, okay, we went and we got somebody who's well-established and competent at the scheme we want to run. But like things might change. Coaches have to be flexible. And I would like to see some more innovation on that side of the ball as well than just going with Ed Donatel. Uh, most excited about, you know, I'm stoked that they kept Keenan Marcardo. He's got a great relationship with our best player. So I'm excited to see Keenan Marcardo here and hopefully grow within the scheme and grow into bigger roles on Kevin O'Connell's coaching staff. Those are my boring answers. What about you, Eric? <laughs> well, I, I, I'll go to who I like first. I, I'm excited about Wes Phillips as the offense coordinator because he is a younger guy. And obviously O'Connell thought enough of Phillips to put him in place as his first offensive coordinator. And as we know from the Zimmer era, as head coach, you're only as good as the coordinators you put around your, to surround yourself with. Yeah. And, um, you know, Phillips was a passing game coordinator for a Los Angeles Rams passing game that was, well, they were pretty damn good. I mean, that, and there's always lot, there's lots of talk about putting Jefferson in the Cooper Cup role, which basically means just about everywhere in the field, which I think think is great that's exciting jefferson should get the ball in his that doesn't make sense possible. to me by the way that that doesn't make sense but, to me i know it's like a hot trend but like he's a different type of player so uh, like yeah, can we i mean go it's, deeper it's there? definitely not a ep- yeah but i i do like to see you yeah. know i i wouldn't mind seeing him line up a little more all over the field. And I think the the previous regime did a pretty good job with that, but it, it's, I'm, I don't want him to run block as much as Cooper cup does, you know, like I, I'd rather see him run. Well, all and, else, and, but. And, and yeah, that run blocking is what make Cooper cup. So versatile in the, in the passing game in the receiving game, because every single down you had to worry about Cooper cup blocking, you know, the defenders yeah. actually got fooled by all the run fakes not just by the lineman and by the fake handoff, but by the wide receiver who was pretending to block too. So I hope that it goes further. I hope that that was just a catchphrase and he has new ideas for Justin Jefferson rather than just running it back and pretending that he's Cooper Cup. Yeah, that that's totally fair. I like the McCardo too. I mean, that's obviously like they overturned almost the entire coaching staff and to keep him around, I think spoke a lot because it's not like McCardo was a, a long tenured coach. He was only here a year. And I, I, I love the Greg Minuski hire just because it's such a, a football, like he's yeah. such a football guy. Like I'm a sucker for the former player that comes back and, and coaches the position he played. You know, I think he only played three years with the Kings. Didn't do a whole lot, but like that, I just like the, I kind of like the mix. There's the older guys like Donatel. The one I don't like is it's Donatel's kid. Again, he's only a quad, a quality control coach. It's not like they hired him as coordinator, but they were how, so close to not doing like any better. And I know, but like at least he earned his spot a little bit. And like it's, it, you know, I don't know, yeah, it's it wasn't a straight up nepotism hire. That Donatel's kid was absolutely one. I thought they would avoid it, but they, I guess they yeah. just out of force they have it. The Vikings had to do it. All right, what's your next question? Uh, it's it's the NFL Combine. I think there is college students literally sprinting 40 yards at a time right now. So what's your takeaway from the Vikings press or press conferences? I mean, my main takeaway that is, I think it's probably if Adolfo Mensa and O'Connell, they don't work out as GM and head coach respectively, they have great fallback careers in teaching media coach training or in politics. I mean, these guys are really good they know their way around a microphone like they 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 know how to 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 work up the press and get all the fans fired up i think but i mean in all seriousness i never really want to read too much into these introductory press conferences i mean they they know what to say you can be the best public speaker in the world but like i mentioned if they the vikings suck in three or four years not not, none of these press conferences are going to matter but i do really like how both of them seem to be on the same page by taking a holistic approach to their respective jobs they aren't going to be defined by one specific methodology i really like that they're not they're going to use analytics but they aren't going to just blindly follow the numbers either I, I like that mix and neither are afraid to kind of admit that they don't know what they don't know I think that's what was one of the biggest problems with the previous regime is they were a little too stubborn and a little too proud in that respect and I think that sounds like both Kwesi and KOC are going to allow input from everywhere to help them make the best decisions and I guess at this point that's all you can ask for I mean they're they're really great to listen to um you know, I'm, I'm not gonna read too much into it but I do like to see them that I like the overall approach you're taking <laughs> comment from Mateo takeaway O'Connell's words don't matter he likes Garrett Bradbury 
that alone means he's <laughs> lying. <laughs> Uh, you know, I'll be quick with my main takeaway, but my main takeaway is they continue to stress the defensive side of the ball, which means, you Mm -hmm. know, I think we're actually going to see more turnover on that side of the ball than we do on the offensive side, quarterback included. So everything I heard sounded like Kirk Cousins is going to be here for at least 2022, but we'll see. We'll see. Yep. All right. Let's my uh, second question for you. The next question. All right. The the big name uh, swirling around the last couple of days, so I had to bring it up in one of my questions. What are the odds that Brandon Scherf comes to the Vikings? He's an Iowa guy, you know. Yeah, he's he he's a Midwest guy. He's currently, I think, ranked 16th in PFF's top 100 free agents. Uh, he should 100% be the main target on on the vikings free agency board and hopefully when we get into the legal tampering period next week that's the name we hear about first is brandon sherp i think he's a great fit for uh coming to the state of minnesota he's exactly what we need which is interior offensive line help i haven't looked too too into the uh the scheme fit but my bigger concern is, again, this guy is really good, so he's going to have options. And, you know, money talks more than location does. So what do you yep. think, Eric? I mean, he he was high on our wish list last offseason. I mean, and that's that's kind of the fun part. Like, he's been swirling around in the connection of the Vikings. And, I, you know, there was a report out there. It's like he wants to be closer to home when I went. It's like, sure. It, it, I mean, maybe <laughs> yeah. if the money's similar, like he's not going to take like a hometown discount to come back to Minnesota or near Iowa, you know, I, but I don't think the price tag will be quite as high as maybe people thought last off season. Cause just, he hasn't played mm-hmm. a full season for the past five years. I mean, his games played, he started every game, his first two seasons. And since then it's been 15, eight, 11, 13 and 11. That's not, disastrous but it's not exactly incredibly durable but i mean when he does play he's still one of the better guards in the nfl and he's almost certainly the best free agent guard on the market this year so i mean i'd love i would love him on the team because lord knows how much uh help this interior offensive line has struggled over the last uh few years several years but i mean a lot of things need to happen with restructures resignings and making a whole bunch of decisions with everything else before the vikings can even consider bringing him in they're still over the cap right now they haven't made any official moves so i mean unless he re- again they like, wants to take that midwest discount i think the odds are still pretty long and you know hopefully settling for ezra cleveland and maybe wyatt davis i don't know maybe that's not <laughs> as big of a disaster as it's recently been i'm trying to be optimistic here but yeah i still think it's kind of a long shot just because there's a lot of things that have to happen beforehand but it, it's fun to think about right now in march definitely definitely it's funny that vikings fans are excited about the best offensive guard in the market that really just tells you what's been going on with the offensive line next question right. All right, this is the big question as we start the new NFL year. You got to pick one for each of these guys, Eric. Adam, Dalvin, Kirk, extend one, trade one, replace one. Huh, this is tough. I mean, th- I love I love the question itself because this is like the NFL version of F Mary Kill. You know, like you have to do, you have to pick one. Yep. Like the yep. NFL. But I mean, it, but again, it's supposed to be tough. So, okay, here goes. Extend. I'll go with Thielen. I mean, it could make some fine fiscal sense here, and even though he technically still has three years left on his deal, including this year, and he just converted ten million dollars of his salary as a signing bonus last year. I think he still has at least a couple good scenes left in him. So another extension might make the last couple of years of his de- of the deal kind of less than desirable. And But as of right now, there's not a lot. I don't think there's actually any guaranteed um, in the last couple of years. And the, the cap hit isn't, you know, the cap hit's going up. So hopefully, you know, if they can kick the can down the road a little bit with him. Again, this is, this is the one that, you know, we're talked about sure taking a home down discount maybe Thielen would actually do that from being a lifetime you know I'd love to see him play his entire career with the Vikings I mean it's already such a great story that the Detroit Lakes blah 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 $500 scholarship with that a story we've heard a uh, eight million times but I really think that that'd be cool and mm-hmm. it's more that I'm choosing Thielen to extend because I'm 
don't want to extend you the, the other two. I, <laughs> dealing is the, the least of three evils as far as it comes to extending, I think, there. So that brings us to trade. Um, I'll go okay. with Cousins here, and this is not a Kirk bashing session, I promise. I just think you could probably get the most for him right now. Like I, I mean, there seems to be some sort of market, and there's some QB needy teams. Like I could see the Panthers; they they make dumb trades for quarterbacks. They just did one last year. Like why don't you know if they, if it's maybe some team bowls the Vikings over and gives a bunch of draft picks and or a couple of big assets or something like that, and maybe someone talks themselves into that narrative that you know, hey, Cousins could be the next Stafford. You, all you got to do is surround him with this team and Stafford won his Super Bowl first year with the Rams. And, you know, Brady won his Super Bowl the first year with the Buccaneers. No one's comparing, comparing Cousins to Brady, of course, but, like, you can get these veteran quarterbacks if you surround them with a good enough team. You know, maybe the Steelers do that. I, but, I, I mean, I really don't think that's incredibly possible, but, you know, it's it's still at least in the realm of possibility for this exercise here. So I'll, I'll, I'll trade yeah. cousins. And then that leaves us with, with cook to replace. And I obviously like Dalvin a ton, and I'm really excited to see what he does in this offense this year. I, he, he's already been great. Um, like, but I think he, they could really unlock his talents in both in the passing game and the running game. It's, it, it's, he, he could maybe take that next step up this season. But for this exercise, I have to put him here because of the whole running backs don't matter thing. You could find a replacement for a cheaper, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, the argument that, you know, and, and the fact that the Vikings have literally had to replace him several times already in his career. You know, he hasn't been the most uh, uh, available person. So they, they've, they've seen the replacement and it hasn't no. completely fallen off a cliff, even if, uh, you know, the, the ceiling on Madison and players like that are are not as nearly as high as Delvin Cook. The, the Vikings can survive without him. So that's for me. So what, I, I'm very curious what you do for this one. Yeah, I, I think the one thing that really stands out is that Kirk is the only one of the three that actually has trade value. Uh, right. So that's kind of right there. You got to you got to be you got to trade Kirk. Um, Dalvin is the only one where you actually see players on the roster Kane Nwangu and Alex Madison, who could actually perform his role. So you got to replace Dalvin. And then Adam, this is where it gets dicey because, I mean, Adam Thielen's 32. You don't necessarily want to extend his contract right now, but you really, you right. don't have a wide receiver too. You, I don't, I'm not ready to just crown KJ Osborne like we crown Charles Johnson you know, eight to 10 years ago. So you may not have even have a wide receiver uh, three. So you really got to get a couple good, more good years out of Adam Thielen for this thing to work. So I agree with all your answers. Wow. We actually agreed on it, but yeah, it's not like we feel great about any of them either though. That was, that was a hard question. I just sat there and thought about yeah. it when you sent it yeah. over. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> All right, we got just under two minutes left. We'll go fast with this last one. Which current free agents will the Vikings re-sign, if any? There are a lot of them, but not a ton that really have uh, our candidates to come back. So do you think they re-sign any of them? I, yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's just so hard to tell. It's what makes this offseason so exciting because we have a complete new regime, and mm -hmm. maybe they love Mason Cole, but I doubt it. Maybe – they hate Tyler Conklin um, or maybe they go out and they say, no, we want to run two tight end sets with Irv Smith Jr. and Tyler Conklin, just like the last regime did. Uh, and then you've got guys on the defensive side of the ball. Patrick Peterson is the number one player that I think they will aggressively try to resign. And then Xavier Woods is up there too. It it's going to be on the defensive side of the ball is my prediction while they try to draft on the offense. What do you think? Well, I think, you know, like uh, Sam Ekstrom of Purple Insider had a really good article about this. And out, out of the 20, yeah. I think he only listed, listed the specialist of like Jordan Berry and uh, Greg Joseph that had an over a 50% chance. <laughs> I'm with you on Peterson. I think Conklin's going to price, going to get priced out. Barr basically said goodbye. Um, I could maybe yeah. see someone like Mason Cole or maybe Rashad Hill one more time, but I think we've, we kind of know what they have there. So yeah, I, and, and even with Woods, I liked what Woods did this year, but Bynum kind of showed enough in those couple games that he did get a lot of run that it's like, I'm okay with him maybe being the guy next year. So I don't see a lot, maybe 
two or three I, at the most, like probably four of those. <laughs> All right. Did it. Y'all. And, and that's it. That's Viking hot takes. We're back in the sea. We got sponsorships. We got Lake. Oh, no, no. See, I can't even. We got, got Lake got, Monster go Brewing. Yep. There yes. we go. There we go. One so of my favorite local to... breweries. Check their space out if you haven't. It, they have not only good beer, their space there in St. Paul is uh, really cool. And I hear that Dave is going to start sending me some of these beers. So I'm patiently <laughs> waiting for that. I'm patiently waiting for mine too. Uh, but I do hear <laughs> they have good beers. From everybody that lives up there, and Eric just to test, they yep. – do make outstanding beer, you know, land of 10,000 lakes and one monster. It's, it looks good. Everything I've read, seen, and heard from the guys talking to them, this is going to be a wonderful collaboration as we both grow our brands. And of course, what goes better with Vikings football talk than beer? And I can't wait to, you know, get to know these guys better, to sample their products, because I hear they're fantastic, and uh, they to are. share them with you all. Damn straight. Well said, Dave. And until next time, y'all, enjoy the start of the NFL season. It starts right now, 2022. There's just so much speculation to get into. So many moves that are going to be made, and half of them are going to happen before the legal tampering period. So yeah. we'll be back officially next week to talk all that. Maybe I'll have something in me in, in this room other than just me. I'm in an empty room right now, but hey, I still got the takes. So y'all still keep coming back. Outstanding. And our next show, thank you for a great full week. Our next show is Saturday with me and Darren. As we talk three general themes, one of them going to be some of those free agents. Brandon Scherf will come up as we focus on our in-depth dive into the Vikings interior O-line and what's available. What do we oh, say, guys? Thanks for everyone. Skull, thanks for chiming in, everyone. Skull. See you next time. Thank you for watching or listening. As always, if you like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. And if you're listening to the podcast, please rate us on your favorite aggregator. Let's go, everybody.